welcome to the Secret Lab on Titania and Argoth, Sanctum of Nature and Titania Guy Incarnate. This is a very, a very fun commander deck to be playing. So let's go and cover basically all three moving pieces of Titania. So we have Titania, Voice of Guy, um, Reach. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain two life. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four more land cards in your graveyard and you own both Titania and Argoth, uh, meld them into Titania Guy Incarnate. So let's take a quick look at Argoth, Sanctum of Nature. Um, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary green creature, add green mana, then for a 4 mana activation, create a 2-2 two -two bear creature token, then mill 3 cards, activate only as a sorcery, and then finally, with the meld option, we have Titania, Guy Incarnate, Vigilance, Reach, Trample, and Haste, Titania's power of toughness is equal to the number of lands you control, whenever Titania enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, then for a 4 mana activation, put 4 plus 1 counters on target land you control, it becomes a 0, zero elemental creature token with haste, it is still a land. Now as far as the creativity on a deck like this, you're pretty much wide open. Um, you do have Titania and Argos, so you do want to work towards that, but as far as the rest of the deck, you can go Landfall, you can build some sort of kind of mono green graveyard style deck, uh, mono green Stompy. Um, at the end of the day, you don't really have to have a lot, of, you're not restricted in your deck building with Titania, and so that is a very nice thing. So we got pretty high creativity as far as Titania goes. Um, as far as the support package goes, pretty much if you're just trying to get the mailed option of Titania going, you do need to run direct land searches in there to make sure that you can find that land. Uh, but other than that, you don't really have to have a dedicated support package. You do want to have some sort of cohesive game plan. You know, Landfall, Stompy, you know, whatever that is. Some sort of cohesive game plan. But as far as just having this deck that is full of support cards to make sure you can melt them, um, you don't have to go super heavy on that. And with Titania, with the timing, um, if you are trying to go for the meld option, uh, this is going to be an early and often commander. You want her on the battlefield to be able to get Argoth down, get that meld option going. And so having some sort of protection for Titania, whether it's Lightning Grease, Swift Foot Boots, um, there's some Mono Green Protection Spells, whatever that may be. Um, this is a early and often commander, so you're going to want to have her on the battlefield if you want to get that meld option going. And especially uh, if you're trying to line it up to where you do have that necessary land cards in the graveyard uh, to get that big threat creature. Now the way this video is going to play out is we're going to be talking about different mono green packages that you can run in your Titania deck. And one of the best ways that you can do that is with some sort of landfall package. Uh, we've got Scoot Swarm, Rampaging Bailoffs, and Avenger of Zendikar. One of the nice things about this is that whenever you're making a land drop, just being able to get a free creature along with a land drop, that is going to go a very long way as far as building your board state. Um, Scoot Swarm is going to get some really nice tokens on the battlefield, especially if you get more copies of it. Um, Rampaging Bailoffs, even though it is 6 mana, Whenever you get that down, you can really start churning out those 4-4 beast tokens. Um, yeah, that, that turns into a very, very powerful threat. And then Avenger of Zendikar, this is the way that you bounce back from a board wipe. Let's say that somebody goes for a damnation or clears the entire board. Um, getting down Avenger of Zendikar late in the game to get those plant tokens, and then once you get those plus one counters on those plant tokens, um, it's just a wonderful way to get an army back after a board wipe. Um, we also have cards like Tireless Tracker, Lotus Cobra, and Tireless Provisioner. Um, one of the nice things about Tireless Tracker is that with Tireless tracker uh, whenever land enters the battlefield we're going to get a clue token so that's going to be a good way for you to get some really nice consistent card draw over the course of the game um, with lotus cobra being able to add mana whenever land enters the battlefield let's say that we play a fetch land uh, with lotus cobra we play the fetch so that's one mana to our mana pool uh, we crack the fetch that land enters the battlefield that's two mana and if that land comes into play untapped, then that's three mana. So with Lotus Cobra on the battlefield, it turns your fetch lands into three mana, which allows you to ramp into some stuff like Rampaging Bay Loss. And the same thing with Tireless Provisioner, being able to get that treasure token. You can make a food token if you want, but where the money's at is uh, definitely those treasure tokens. Um, we also have Retreat. This is a really good way to kind of, you know, if you're not making tokens, you can go for that plus one counter on target creatures to kind of start building them up, or you can gain two life. Um, we do gain life with our commander. And so if you're running some sort of mono green life gain deck, Retreat's going to be a wonderful way to get some a little bit of extra consistent life gain. Um, Seer Sundial, it's pretty much the same thing as Tireless Tracker. Whenever a lane enters the battlefield, you can pay two to draw a card. Uh, but you don't have the clue token option to crack it when you have that mana available. Uh, but if there's a lot of times where you ramp, 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 and you get down Seer Sundial, this is going to be a really good way to kind of help push you into the mid game and late game, uh, being able to cash in some uh, card draw 
off of your land drops. And then of course there's Zendikar's Royal. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, we get a 2-2 elemental creature token. So that's another way for you to just kind of generate a board state um, off of your land drops. Now I do want to highlight the brand new card from the new set, and that is Awaken the Woods. Um, that's going to be X and Devil Green. Create X 1-1 Green Forest Dryad creature tokens. Um, they are lands, and they are affected by summoning sickness. So one of the nice things about this, this is a great way to get a lot of creatures on the battlefield, but it's also a wonderful way to enable a lot of landfall. So um, let's say that we have Tireless Tracker, Lotus Cobra, Rampaging Bay Loss on the battlefield. We get eight of these Dryad creatures down. Um, that's going to be eight clue tokens with Tireless Tracker. That's going to be eight mana with Lotus Cobra. And that's going to be eight beast tokens with Rampaging Bay Loss. And we get to untap next turn with eight extra mana if it sticks around. So um, as far as landfall goes, this is one of the best ways to make sure that you're enabling landfall uh, in your deck. The other area that you do want to focus on in your Titania deck is making sure that you have a good ramp package. Uh, cards like Rolling Regrowth, Springbloom Druid, and Haro, um, these are wonderful ways to make sure that you get ahead on land drops and you get those lands in the graveyard as you sacrifice them. Um, you still want to have your core mono green stuff in here. Three visits, Cultivate, Sky Shell Claim. Uh, you want to have two drops, three drops, four drops that get lands on the battlefield. You want to be able to ramp and you want to be able to do busted things as quickly as possible. Um, there's also some other cards if you want to focus your ramp on that kind of are a little bit more situational. Uh, traverse the Outlands. Search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Put them onto the battlefield. So you can imagine if we have a melded uh, Titania, that's going to be a lot of basics on the battlefield. Um, if you're going with a little bit more of a go wide style deck, Harvest Season is going to be a great way to get a lot of lands onto the battlefield equal to our tap creatures. And then with Respite, um, search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the number of creatures attacking you. Put them on the battlefield, tap and shuffle. Then you get to prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn. So um, you want to run the sack ramp, you want to run your core ramp, and then if you want to run some of these situational uh, ramp spells, um, these are wonderful ways to make sure you get those extra lands on the battlefield. Outside of the ramp spells in your deck, you do want to focus on ways to get extra lands on the battlefield. So with Dryad and Wayward Sawtooth, those are going to be ways that you can make an extra land drop. Um, Azusa Lost But Seeking, that's going to allow you to play two and additional lands on your turn. So if you're running some sort of Life from the Loam deck where you're pulling a lot of lands out of your graveyard, Azusa's really going to allow you to get those land drops flowing. And there's also some enchantments you can run in here. Burgeoning and Exploration are wonderful ways to get those down on turn 1, turn 2, and be able to get those extra lands flowing. With Exploration, that's going to be an extra land on each of your turns. And then with Burgeoning, that's going to allow you to dump lands out of your hand as your opponents play lands. And then a little bit more of the budget conscious, you have Druid class. Uh, you get the life gain, but once you get it leveled up, you're going to be able to get an extra land uh, on each of your turns. So that's always nice to have that option. Um, outside of making extra land drops, you do want to have ways to gain access to lands on top of your library. Um, Augur of Autumn, Course of Crufix, Oracle of Moldiah. These are ways that you can rip the lands off the top of your library, um, get those lands going, and then if you have something on top you do want to draw into, you can really get that nice value going to your hand while kind of shedding those lands off the top of your library. Um, you can imagine, let's say they have Oracle of Moldiah on the battlefield. We have Azusa Lost But Seeking. Uh, we got a forest on top, forest, and you just start ripping lands off the top of your library. Uh, being able to play from the top of your library in addition to your hand um, that's a wonderful way to get those lands going. Um, the other way you do want to focus on being able to play extra lands is coming out of the graveyard. So we've got Excavator, uh, Crucible of Worlds, and Splendid Reclamation. Uh, with Excavator and Crucible of Worlds, these are going to be a little bit more of a consistent extra lands from your graveyard. Um, you can see if we have a Zoos on the battlefield with one of these going, that allows us to pull more lands out of the graveyard. And then with Splendid Reclamation, let's say that we have a lot of milling going on. Um, that's going to allow you to massively dump a ton of cards onto the battlefield and uh, just end up with a ton of landfall triggers. Uh, some of the other ways to kind of get some landfall style action going, we have Realms Uncharted. Um, this is going to allow you to search for four different land cards with different names. Uh, two go into your hand, two go into the graveyard. So if you want to get Argoth into the graveyard, uh, play it out of the graveyard with Crucible of Worlds, or let's say they send it back to your hand, then you're going to be able to play it. Um, so with Realms Uncharted, that's a wonderful way to kind of get lands into the graveyard to be able to play them, and at the same time, get exactly what lands you want. Um, same thing with World Shaper. Um, that's going to give you some good consistent milling and then whenever it dies you get to put on lane cards from the graveyard onto the battlefield and then same thing with mending of dominaria uh, once again just being able to mass repeat great uh, all of your lands out of the graveyard it is a very uh, very powerful effect in commander 
Um, outside of making extra land drops, you do want to have ways to kind of interact with, with your graveyard. Uh, with Elvish Reclaimer, um, they're going to get a nice bonus for the most part with that two mana activation that's going to fuel lands in your graveyard. Then you can search your library for a land card, put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So with Elvish Reclaimer, that's a great way to kind of get cards going into your graveyard and grab exactly whatever land you need out of your deck. Um, Life from the Loam, if you never played a Life from the Loam deck, most of the time you're just dredging Life from the Loam turn after turn. Uh, you're going to uh, throw three cards into your graveyard. That's going to give you a lot more access to a lot more lands to be able to play them. You can return them back to your hand, which allows you to fuel Azusa, different things like that. Um, if you're trying to build some sort of graveyard style deck, Life from the Loam is definitely an auto include in there. I know it may be, be kind of expensive, uh, but Life from the Loam is a very a very powerful card as far as trying to get as many cards in the graveyard so you can play them. And then you also have cards like Turn Timber Sower. Um, whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you get a plant creature token. So um, a 0-1 plant, uh, plant token is not the best thing out there, but if you're running Stampede Effects, if you're running Crater Hoof, whatever that may be, uh, being able to get just a free token off of a uh, land going to the graveyard, um, that's a great way to kind of build up your board state. And then also with that activated ability, you can sack the three creatures as plant tokens and return it from the graveyard to your hand in a pinch. Uh, but for the most part, just being able to get an extra value from a land going to your graveyard, that's going to be very good. Um, outside of these cards, you do want to run ways that give you card advantage and fuel your graveyard at the same time. Uh, so we've got Winding Way, uh, choose creature and land, reveal the top four, and then we get whatever we want and the rest goes into the bin. Um, same thing with Grapple in the Past, that's going to mill three cards into your graveyard. Then we can return a creature or a land card. Uh, back to our hand. So let's say that Argoth is in the graveyard um, with Grapple with Pass. We can bring that back out of our hand and mill at the same time. And the same thing with Mulch. Reveal the top four cards of your library, put all land cards in your hand, and the rest go into the bin. So that way, if you're trying to get creatures in there or bring them back, whatever that may be, you just want to be able to look at the top card of your library, get some sort of card advantage, and build your graveyard at the exact same time. Um, some other ways that you can get lands into the graveyard and still get some sort of benefit, we have Sylvan Safekeeper. Um, sacrifice a land target creature you control gain strength out until end of turn. Um, this is a wonderful way to where if you're setting up World Shaker or you're setting up some sort of way to bring all of your lands back onto the battlefield, um, with Sylvan Safekeeper, uh, you can sack all of your lands they go to the bin in response to some sort of mass recursion out of the graveyard, bring all those lands back, and you're good to go. Um, same thing with Orb. This is a wonderful way for you to sacrifice land, gain two life. Um, with Orb, I think, uh, I can't remember, maybe it's Glacial Chasms or some sort of card that interacts with Zur and Orb to where you can sacrifice it and gain life, um, whatever that is. But yes, with Zur and Orb, that's another way you can sacrifice lands to get them down. And then with Constant Mist, um, two mana, buyback, sack of land, uh, fog out combat damage. There's a lot of times where if you've made a lot of land drops you're getting extra land drops down um, you can just keep spanning constant mist and get that fog effect going and it's a really wonderful way to kind of stabilize if not push yourself into the late game so um, something like constant mist you know that's a really you know like with sylvan safekeeper and zirin orb you know you're sacrificing a lot of lands with constant mist you know if you just have azusa out there you're going to be able to keep kind of making those land drops and keep up with that sacrificed ability. Uh, one of the other things, if you're trying to go for a little bit more of a graveyard style deck, we have Crawling Infestation and Crawling Sensation. Uh, with Infestation, you're going to have that mill option at the beginning of your upkeep. Then, whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, uh, you get that green insect creature token. Um, this is not the best card out there, but if you're building a mono green graveyard deck, it's definitely worth looking into. Um, same thing with Crawling Sensation. Uh, you have that option to mill cards at the top uh, at the beginning of your turn. Then, whenever one more land card to put in your graveyard to get another insect creature token so just having some of these cards in here that give you that extra value of something going to the graveyard to get a token that's a nice thing to go for now with titania protector of argoth um, enters the battlefield return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield then whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield you get a five three green elemental creature token if you get Titania down and you start sacrificing lands, getting lands going to the bin, um, those 5-3 elementals are very hard to deal with. And they <laughs> it's a great way to build up a very threatening board state to try to close the game out. Um, some other good graveyard style stuff you want to incorporate into your deck. Eternal Witness, this is going to bring anything out of your graveyard back to your hand. So if you're spending a lot of time getting stuff into the graveyard, Eternal Witness is a wonderful option to bring something back. Um, with Fresh Meat, um, create a 3-3 green beast creature token for each creature put into the graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Um, this is a little bit more situational, but if somebody does go for a board wipe, being able to go for fresh meat and kind of regain your board state, it's a great way to kind of bounce back from that. And with Kessig Cage Breakers, um, this is actually a really fun mono green card. So whenever it attacks, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token that's tapped and attacking for each creature card in your graveyard. So 
let's say we get Kessig down, we've got 10 creatures in the graveyard whenever it attacks, that's 10 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. Um, that's a great way to just kind of have this mono green value creature in here that can get out of hand very quickly uh, if you have some sort of graveyard established for cage breakers. Uh, some other stuff you want to look into, we've got the blobs, the oozes out there. Um, with uh, the first blob, uh, whatever it attacks, if there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard, we get an extra ooze onto the battlefield. Uh, consuming blob is equal to the number of card types in your graveyard plus one. Then at the beginning of your instep, we get to create an ooze token, which is basically the same thing. Um, kind of like, you know, it's a very slow version of Kessie. Uh, cage breakers but if you're playing a little bit more of a longer mono green style deck um, getting down something like consuming blob and getting those repeated uh, beginning of your instep token creation that's uh, a great way to build up your board state and then there's also Rin and seven so with the plus one reveal the top four cards of your library put all land cards and the rest into your graveyard and with the zero ability put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tap you just want to have some sort of way that interacts with the graveyard where you're not building just you know you can build a straight dedicated graveyard deck but having cards in here that just care about some sort of graveyard value it's a great way to add some extra uh, extra threats to your deck so we've talked about landfall we've talked about extra land drops graveyard stuff and one of the things we do want to talk about is ways that you can find Argoth if you want to go for that meld option. And one of the new cards they've released in this set is really cool to kind of check out. This can be a root path purifier. Lands you control and lands in your library are basic. And so what that means is all of your lands are basic lands. So when you have stuff like Veteran Explorer, Burnished Heart, Secure Tri Builder, these all care about getting a basic out of your library. So with root path, you know, that's going to turn any you know all of your lands turn into basic so you don't have to run this like crazy root path purifier line but it is worth noting that if you run this in here um you can use veteran explorer burnish heart tri builder to grab argoth if you want to go for a quick meld option so that is something to kind of keep in mind you know if you want to build a deck around root path you certainly can but at least including it in your deck and being aware of that actual interaction that is something that is important because there's a lot of ways you know evolving wilds prismatic vista terramorphic expanse uh, glaciers blighted wood Woodland, warp landscape. Once you have root path down and you turn all of your lands and your deck into basics, all of these turns into instant land tutors, uh, which is a wonderful thing to include in there. And really at no huge cost to you because some of these lands are pretty much going to be running in your deck anyway. Um, some of the other land tutors you want to go for if you're trying to find Argoth, we have Nylea's Intervention. Um, search your library for X lands cards, put them in your hand. Uh, crop Rotation, this is probably the number one card you want to run in a deck if you're trying to go for Argoth. It just costs one mana. You can tap down a forest, crop rotate that same, sacrifice that land, and search your library for a land card, put it on the battlefield tap. So uh, this is a one mana tutor for the meld card. So I highly recommend running crop rotation in there. I mean, that's the best way to find the land that you're looking for. Um, there's also Sylvan Scrying, which is gonna allow you to search for a land, goes into your hand. Um, there's some other a little bit higher converted mana cost tutors that give you a few more cards. With Hour of Promise and Titania's Command, that's going to allow you to grab two specific lands out of your library. Um, if you go for Deserts, you're going to get the 2-2 two -two Zombie Tokens with Hour of Promise with Titania's Command. You're going to have some a little bit more of a modal option. Um, it's just going to be nice with Titania's Command. You can search your library for two land cards, grab Merit Lage and Thespian Stage, and then get two bear tokens uh, to tag along. And I just love that mental image. Um, some of the other ways you can kind of grab specific lands out of your deck, you've got Scape Ship, which is going to sacrifice all of your land, so that's going to allow you to grab Argoth and grab some other good stuff out of there. Uh, Ovenwald Hydra is going to allow you to grab a specific land out of your graveyard, out of your library, excuse me, and then will reshape the earth. This is going to be one of your high impact tutors. Uh, search your library for up to 10 land cards, put them onto the Battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So, you know, whatever you're doing as far as searching for a land, there's a lot of different ways that you can go for it. And if you want to keep the converted mana cost low, you can stick with Nylea's Intervention, Crop Rotation, Sill and Scrying. If you want to go wide and have fun, you've got stuff like Scape Shift and Reshape the Earth. Uh, since we are tutoring up specific lands in our deck, it wouldn't hurt to just have some sort of portfolio of utility lands that you're going for outside of Argoth. Um, Dark Depths and Thespian Stage, it's going to allow you to get a 2020 Avatar creature token and flying indestructible. It's always nice. Uh, Guy's Cradle, that's going to be one of the best ways to generate a ton of mana in a deck like this. I know it is expensive and in paper, but it is very cheap on Magic Online, so uh, if you're playing online, pick it up. If you're playing in paper, see if you can have some sort of placeholder card for it. And then even something like Field of the Dead, you know, you don't have to go for a Field of the Dead, but, you know, if you have enough lanes on the battlefield with different names, uh, it's always nice to be able to get a lot of those extra zombies. Um, some of the utility lands you want to include in some of your tutor searches or your utility package, but Seiju is going to allow you to take care of artifacts and enchantments. Uh, Homer Pass is going to allow you to gain control of your creatures. Command Beacon is going to allow you to cheat that commander tax. 
uh, Maze of Ith is going to allow you to fog out a creature for the turn. Um, some of the other utility stuff, Scavenger Grounds with Exile and Graveyards, War Room is going to give you some card advantage. Um, Lighthouse is going to allow you to make sure you can fight creatures if they have Hexproof. And then Blast Zone, that's going to allow you to destroy stuff. So just being able to have that extra modal, that extra utility in your land base, you don't have to run all these lands in here, but maybe pick out a couple extra to where if you do have Argoth on the battlefield, uh, you know what sort of lane you're trying to grab. Um, one of the other things you can include in your mono green deck, I wouldn't do it in all of them, but it is kind of fun. You can run the Urza's land in here because there is a brand new Urza. So you have Mine, Power Plant, and Urza's Tower. Um, if you get Urza's Workshop on the battlefield, Metalcraft, uh, you get to add colorless mana for each Urza land that you control. And so there's a lot of different ways where you can get a lot of Urza lands on the battlefield. So this isn't like the premium number one land package you need to be running, but if you want to add a little bit of extra flavor uh, to your deck, this is certainly one way to do it. Um, outside of land searchers and making extra land drops, if you want to focus on maybe kind of the life gain package in your deck, there's not a ton of life gain cards out there, but there's some good ones. Uh, well of Lost Dreams is going to allow you to get card advantage equal to the life gain that you gained. Um, Blossoming Bog Beast is a wonderful way to turn that life gain into some sort of trample style effect where they get plus X plus X. And then with Aetherflux Reservoir, if you've never played a life gain deck, sometimes the life gain gets out of control, so it's kind of nice to have that uh, pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to something. Uh, some other good life gain cards we have fortifying drought which is going to give you specific plus x for life gain uh, accomplished alchemist is going to allow you to add mana equal to the amount of life gain and then sprout back trudge is just kind of a cool life gain card that you can get out of the graveyard you don't want you know you don't have to go super heavy with the life gain stuff in your deck but you know running something like accomplished alchemist to where you get that down you can add mana but then you can have that option to add extra mana uh, with that life gain it's just nice to have that utility built into your deck um, one of the other fun packages you can include in your deck is running some sort of X lands style creature deck. You know, you've got Green Sleeves, Morrow Sorcerer, that's going to give you those extra beast tokens or those badger tokens on the battlefield with landfall. But it's also going to be equal to the number of lands you control. Same thing with Multani. Um, Cultivator Colossus is going to have that trample on XX. So if the thought of just having a creature out there is equal to the number of lands you control, these are some of the best options you can run in there. Um, outside of Cultivator Colossus, we've got Black Blade Reforged, uh, Dungrove Elder, and Stratoscythe. Um, once again, you know, if this is something that piques your interest, these are some of the best cards to go for. You also have Soul of the Wild, uh, Twin Grove, and Morrow Sorcerer. You know, these aren't the best things out there, but if you want to have some fun and, and kind of hitting on that theme of having your commander equal to the number of lanes you control, um, these are some of the best cards you can focus on. Um, outside of life gain, one of the other fun things you can run in your deck is Argoth does get a bear onto the battlefield, so if you want to run some sort of bear package, hey, here you go. So we've got a Eula, which is going to allow us to get some sort of modal effect when a bear enters the battlefield field. Uh, we have Gore Claw, which cares about the power of our creatures. And then with Wilson, that's just going to be a very nice uh, Vigilance Reach and Trample Bear uh, to have out there. And there's also some other good utility bear options. We've got Bear Scape, which you can remove two cards from your graveyard from the game to get a bear token on the battlefield. Um, Fade from History is going to allow you to wipe the board of artifacts and enchantments and get a bear token. And then with Ayula's Influence, this is a very nice card. Uh, discard a land card, create a 2-2 two -two green bear creature token. So even if you're not running a dedicated bear package in here, if you're running some sort of graveyard style deck, running Ayula's Influence in here, it's a great way to kind of discard those lands, bring them back out of the graveyard with something like an excavator and get an extra bear token. Um, some of my favorite bears, we've got Were Bear, which once we get that threshold going, it turns into a 4-4. Uh, we've got Spirit of Aldergard. It's going to be plus one for each snow permanent you control, so if you're getting some snow lands in there. And with Mother Bear, uh, you can exile from your graveyard to get some extra bear tokens out there. And um, there's also the, you know, super powerful Stripe Bears. You're going to be able to enter the battlefield and draw a card. And then for the Jace the Mind Sculptor matchups, we have River Bear, which does have Island Walk. And then, of course, there's Owl Bear, which is just enters the battlefield and draw a card. So um, you don't have to run a lot of these bear cards in here, but if you want to build Titania and get bears, hey, these are some of the best cards to be a really good starting point. Now, outside of the life gain, you do want to focus on having some sort of card advantage in your deck. Um, Greater Good, Life's Legacy, and Momentous Fall. Um, these are wonderful ways to, if you have a high power and toughness creature out there, to sacrifice that creature and end up with a lot of card advantage. Um, there's also some other stuff you can kind of incorporate as far as creatures entering the battlefield, Gurk's Uprising, and Colossal Majesty. Um, they're going to care about having a creature of power 4 or greater to get a card draw. And then with the Great Hinge, this is one of the best mono green ways to keep that card draw going. It allows you to ramp. It's going to give you life game which really does matter in a deck like this and then whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control you can put a plus one counter on it and draw a card 
Um, there's some other spells that care about drawing cards equal to the power outside of sacrificing it. So Return of the Wild Speaker, uh, Rich Card's Expertise, and Soul's Majesty. These are great ways to get that nice repeated card draw effect off of a very high power creature out there. Um, one of the other ways you do want to focus on getting some sort of card advantage is when creatures enter the battlefield. Uh, Guardian Project and Path of Discovery, that's one way to kind of get that going with Cream of the Crop. Um, that's another way to, you're not going to get that card advantage, but you're going to be able to look at a ton of cards with Cream of the Crop as creatures enter the battlefield. Now, some of the you know, kind of core mono green staples in a deck like this, you want to have some sort of army in a can style creatures in here. Deranged Hermit, Tender Shoot Dryad, and Deep Forest Hermit. Um, these aren't landfall creatures, but if you get hit with a board wipe, being able to get down Deranged Hermit or Deep Forest Hermit and just get those squirrel tokens going, or just generating those tokens with a Tender Shoot Dryad. Um, like I said, these aren't super high impact cards, but being able to just instantly rebuild your board state, that's definitely something you would incorporate into your deck building. Um, there's also some really good just kind of like five drops or just kind of mid-range value threats. Um, Elder Gargoth is going to give you some really nice options as far as gaining life, drawing a card, getting a beast token. Um, with Silverback Elder, whenever you cast a creature spell, you're going to be able to destroy stuff or look at the top card of your library or go for that life gain. And with Defiler of Vigor, um, this is a wonderful way to use your life total. We're you know, we don't have a crazy life gain deck, but if we're gaining life, being able to kind of do that Frexine cost for green mana and get a plus one counter on our creatures, that's a wonderful thing to kind of incorporate in there. Uh, some other good just mono green cards, Forgotten Ancient. Um, you're going to end up with a lot of counters on Forgotten Ancient once you get that down, and especially at a multiplayer table. Um, being able to protect your board state is very important, so something like Heroic Inter Intervention is going to allow you to bounce back from a board state or a board wipe. And the Bane of Progress, that's going to give you an option to just wipe the board of artifacts and enchantments and end up with a very uh, high power toughness creature with Bane of Progress. Um, some of your high impact spells, we have Primeval Bounty, you can get this down to get those extra beast tokens whenever you cast a creature spell, or get those counters going, or go for life gain whenever you make a land drop. Um, same thing with the Deranged Hermit and Deep Forest Hermit with Howl of the Night Pack. Uh, create a, uh, put a 2-2 wolf creature token on the battlefield for each force that you control. Um, it is expensive, but if you get to the late game and there's not a really lot out there and you go for Howl of the Night Pack, um, that's a great way to really kind of reestablish your board state and start taking over. And then with Azuri's Predation, um, this is a wonderful way to wipe the board and end up with a lot of beast tokens on there. There's a lot of times where you're always going to basically be ahead with Azuri's Predation by the time those beast tokens come down and you get that fight option going. And last but not least, you're going to run some sort of mono green closers. Now, since we are talking about a deck that wants to get a lot of lands on the battlefield, Sylvan Awakening, Kamal's Wheel, and Rude Awakening, these are wonderful ways to turn all of your lands into some sort of threat. Uh, with Sylvan Awakening, this is one of the best ways to do that because it turns your creatures into indestructible in haste. And so that way you can just turn all of your lands into creatures, 2-2 creatures, the indestructible, not really going to matter what's going to happen during combat because you can just turn them sideways and start swinging in. Um, the other thing you do want to incorporate, Overwhelming Stampede, Triumph of the Hordes, Overrun, having some sort of effect that just gives all of your creatures some sort of crazy bonus. It's a great way to close the game out. And of course, having some of your really good heavy hitters, Pathbreaker, Eyebags, Crater Hoof, Inrace Forerunners. If you're getting a lot of creatures out there, you're going to run some variation of these out there. I know um, Crater Hoof does get a lot of hate sometimes, but uh, hey, if you're playing mono green get crater hoof in there there's no i mean it is just so fun to add up that plus x plus x where x the number of creatures you control and they gain trample it's just fun to give all that to all of your creatures and that is going to be it for the deck tech um we covered a lot of stuff in here um the goal of this video was to showcase what is possible and what goes into making a good foundational mono green deck and so if you build this deck in a way to where you've got a lot of landfall you've got a lot of you know uh, extra land drops, whatever that may be. If you build this deck, one of the nice things about this is that you're not just building a Titania deck, you're building a really good mono green deck. So whenever there's a new mono green command, and there's a lot of cards in here that you're running as support creatures that if you just want to do a commander swap, you can totally make that work. So that's one of the nice things to where if you do build this Titania deck in sort of a foundational mono green way, um, you've built a mono green deck. So if there's ever a new mono green commander, you can kind of plug and play with that. It's just nice to have that utility. So um, if there's some cards that I did not cover in this deck tech, hey, hop in the comments. I like seeing different people's play style or maybe you're going for this type of you know strategy with the deck. I enjoy seeing them and especially if people are watching this video to build this deck, uh, they're going to read your comment and hopefully give them some sort of inspiration. But that is going to be it for the video. In fact, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.